previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. All right, so I'm back. I had a shit. So we got a couple options. One, proceed to go see Fackham. Two, I did see a sign to the psychiatry wing. There was that student from last year's final that should be there. Well, as long as we're here. Hey, Miss Gray, we were wondering if we'd be able to potentially go visit with him. Donnie, these are some visitors here to see you. Yeah, we are here to figure out what happened last year. I can tell you what happened. I've told everybody what happened, and nobody wants to listen to me. We've been uh, suspicious about things. We're, we're actually staying in your old room. If you're in my room, did you see what I wrote? We are the Surge. Why? My study group and I, when we go into the final exam, there's this giant arena. We start feeling like we can't connect to the weave anymore. And I see that there's these golden circles tying us together. And I can see the weave. I I can see the life force leaving me. Do you have any idea who could be behind it? Well, I would guess it's somebody here on the campus. So if we're the Surge... What if they're using us to produce power? What if we have to follow the pipes to go to the main one? See, nobody should have to go through what you are, and it does seem like you need a friend. And I want to pull out Communication Stone to give to him. If you want some more power, check out Warren Bell. I'd rather see what's up with these pipes. You are once again in the room where there are six different furnaces, and there is somebody down there. Professor Fackham Kane. What are you doing out of your dorm rooms? I thought there was a curfew in place. We didn't hear it, and since we're down here, we, we had stopped by the infirmary because we actually came across Leung. He had mentioned that I uh, had recently seen you, and I just wanted to see if you knew anything that might have happened to him. Are you trying to accuse me of something, Manny? I told him to meet me down here. He never showed up. Can I look around discreetly? And I want to have Toby kind of go explore the back pipes. Tomorrow, we will be gathering anybody that is not ill in my lecture room. A joint study. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Ben Renfro. Hey guys, excited to be here. So excited that my penis is swollen. Did you say that last week? No, I said my my manhood was throbbing last week. Yeah, we were 30 (laughs) seconds. And now my penis is swollen, or swelled up. Brad Richards. My throat is swollen, but not because your penis is hard. They're not related. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Smith. Saw the new Dungeons and Dragons movie today. It contains Dungeons and Dragons. 10 out of 10 adaptation. <laughs> did you actually see it? I did. Was it any good or was it shit? It was pretty good. Was it? I, wanted to see I it. saw it on Saturday. It was quite good. I did read an article where they said they're like, hey, we knew where we broke the rules of D&D, but here's why. Yeah. Yeah, because the D&D rules are stupid. I mean, as I was watching it as a dungeon master, I was like, ooh, I know that spell. Ooh, I know what that is. Ooh, ooh. And I had to restrain myself from turning to Katie every time and going, it's that spell. She just used chain lightning. Yeah. Wow, spoilers. Yeah, thanks. Dick. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's a part where she says, I'm Chain Lightning, and then Chain Lightning's all over everyone. I've seen videos like that, too. Just not in the movie theater. I know what you're talking about, though. I'm with you. <laughs> all right. Well, we do have one last uh, player at the table with us today. Let's get him in here. Brad Renfro. What do you call a nun who sleepwalks? Hold on. I don't know. Lady of the Night. A roaming Catholic. Uh... <sighs> It's not your strongest, Brad, but we'll take it. I try to throw the (laughs) family-friendly, just cheesy joke that everyone can enjoy. You're going to shake your head, but it's going to be with a smile on your face. Which is pretty much our entire MO for our fifth edition actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast. That was awful. I know it's bad, but it was such a softball that I had to make the transition. So That made my ball soft. (laughs) (laughs) 
So let's go ahead and get started back up in the main campaign of our podcast. Last episode, our adventurers went, well, they started in the infirmary, and then they decided that while they were there, taking Liang to get taken care of, they would also check in on the previous year's survivor from when a bunch of students died. They met Donnie, they talked to him, and he wound up describing how he thought that he had seen the weave as his roommates and study mates died around him. He said that he believes we are the Surge, which is what was written, scratched into the bunk of Dixon. And then after that, they gave him a sending stone, left to go follow the pipes in the basement of the Arkshine. And once they got down there, they also ran into Professor Kane. They helped him rebuild the Surge, and while they were doing that, they questioned him, and he said, no, I had nothing to do with that. How dare you accuse me of that? Specifically towards Manny, who used to be his favorite student. Used to be? Good job, Manny. Now it's Titus. That is not canon. I'm just ribbing you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and while the rest of the group was helping to restore the Surge, Milo and Toby were trying to follow the pipes. They didn't manage to get through the entire thing, so Toby stayed in the basement while everybody else left because a curfew had been put into place because of all the sick people and the weird happenings going around town. Or around campus, I suppose. And so now, we are waking up back in your dorms. It is morning, and there's a knock at your door. Hello? Well, I guess I'm the one to answer the door, because... Thad sleeps on his back, and Manny has to help him up. Dixon scares the shit out of me. I forget, was I on the top uh, bunk? No, I think you're on the bottom bunk. I think I'm up top. So my okay. trade shot opening the door with my bloodshot eyes from not sleeping, listening to uh, all of the demonic moanings that Dixon has in his sleep. Uh, <laughs> hello? You open the door, uh, you say hello, and standing in the doorway is Nora. And she says... Why do I always have to get you guys up? Well, for me to get up, I have to have gone to sleep first, right? <laughs> uh. You poor thing. Maybe you should try just sleeping in the common room. Yeah, are there beds in the common room? I mean, there's couches and armchairs. You're about that size. I close the door. <laughs> That's kind of a rude thing to say. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of small. <laughs> I know. You could fit in the coat closet. <laughs> uh, there's another knock at the door. I'd like to make it clear that I am still asleep, but my trunk is 100% erect and touching the ceiling because of my uh, morning wood. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's a good detail to to note. I don't know why or if it will come in handy, but I feel like it's good to note. I suppose I'll open the door again. Nora's standing there and says, Okay, well, I'm just trying to help you out there, Milo, but I'm helping you all out now. You've got, like, 15 minutes before we need to be down in the artificing hall. They're gathering 15 all minutes? This... Yeah, you've overslept. I told you I didn't sleep. Okay, Ugh. well, hurry up, get ready. They're gathering all of the students that aren't sick so that we can get some education today. And apparently there's going to be some sort of presentation because of the curfew. Okay, okay. No, that was real. I was supposed to say, that was very well done. <laughs> <I'll>, uh, <sighs> Nora yawns too and says, Oh gosh, you're, now you've got me yawning. I'm sorry. Well, mm. I'll get everybody up. I don't want you to be late. I'll uh, say, well, well, we'll see you there. You hear a loud crash as Thad attempts to exit the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Which wakes Manfred up. <laughs> And uh, I climb out of the bed. And go, All right, Thad, let's do this. <laughs> Hoist. <laughs> we'll be right out. And I'll shut the door. Dixon. No. Dixon. No. All right. Wait. You're a part of this team that we need for the final. I need you to get up and try to learn and absorb some sort of information. So get up. And I tip no. the entire bed over. Is, aren't these bunk beds? Yeah. That is very not stable. It's just not a good idea. Yeah, you're a bottom bunker, but I'm still going to grab the frame of the top bunk, and I'm just going to pull, push, whatever, based on the orientation of the room, but I am tipping the entire bed 
to get you to fall out of bed. Just like the first morning. Uh, Did I do that on the first morning? Yes. Oh, nice. So <laughs> the morning routine is I have to get out of bed and climb down from the top bunk, and then I have to roll Thad for one, and then I have to tip over the other bed in the room. <laughs> well, I can't do any of it. While I try not to trip over Milo, and that I do that every morning. <laughs> this sounds exhausting for and me. I, and I am trying to kick out his ankles. I'm not trying to really yeah. stay out of the way. I'm actively <laughs> making this harder. <laughs> you're just like a cat or a dog when you're walking in the middle of the night, and they dive in between your legs just to try to trip you. <laughs> yeah, so that's our that's our morning routine, and uh, all right, it all perfect. unfolds. <laughs> so you all are up. You follow Nora down to the, or you could just follow Manny since he knows where it is. You follow them down to the artificing hall. And once you get in there, there's risers all the way to the back, but there are only about 30 people in the room. And six of them are the deans of the various colleges at the Arkshine. I see Dean Livia and uh, that thing in my trunk starts to happen again. And I would like to make sure it's held down and concealed in some sort of way that is not too suspicious. Tuck it in your waistband. <laughs> my trunk goes straight into my waistband. <laughs> yes, I would like to waistband my trunk. Um, <laughs> Dixon. Did you just waistband your trunk? Yeah, but you see that smoke show up there? <laughs> yeah, I'll climb up on top of Shad's shell. Thad's shell? Shad shell? Shad shell. The shad shell. Shad still. Can you shad close the shells, Shad shells by the shad shell? Shad shells, she shall. Sh- by the shad shore. Thad Thor. By the shore shack. By the Thad. The, the, the thad. Are you opening up the shore shack? The shore shack. <laughs> I smell toast. Are you having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> what? So yeah, we're all standing together. Uh, guys, I'm on let's go. Let's Thad's look. shell. Let's all let's all go sit up there in the front front row. Not many people have taken that yet, and you know, but the front row is for nerds. Yeah, I'm not sitting in the but front. But I always you gotta sit, be cool. I always sit here cool. in this classroom, though. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna come on, uh, Dad. Come come back and join join the cool kids in the mid back of the class. I, okay, you're, I was I was gonna say, but like I can't hear very well from the back. But I have the biggest fucking ears out of all of us, so I can't really get away with that one. All right, but you're right. If I, if we were up front, I might be a little too distracted as I'm still readjusting my waistband. Um, Plus, you know, I have snacks. Oh, do you have peanuts? I I can check in my pockets. I'm sure I have maybe some cracker jacks. Mm, nope. I might have some peanuts. That'd be that'd be cashews. Nice, but nope, um, no cashews. Just peanuts. <laughs> Listen, it's not about the snacks. Let's fine. We can sit in the back. You have a whole griddle top, and you can just make like a full breakfast in the back of the classroom. <laughs> I'm not sure that's quite established, but <laughs> <laughs> if you pulled out a whole griddle top out of your pocket, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say it. I'm pretty much just stopping whenever Paul doesn't let me have an item in my pocket. <laughs> You were taking that cooking class. Can we just start playing a random game where somebody reaches into your pocket and we see what we pull out? <laughs> Not willingly to me. You have to, <laughs> to convince me in character, we'll see. <laughs> I reach in. Is that a hole in there? Oh, where does my. it go? <laughs> <laughs> that that one's not the magical pocket. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we sit in near the back in the middle of the classroom. Okay. That's the compromise. <laughs> <laughs> Up at the front, Professor Fackham Kane says, All right, all right, everybody sit down, the last of you that are still roaming around. As you may have noticed, there are not very many of you, but that is why we've gathered all of the deans here today, and uh, they're, they're going to talk about what's going on. So I cede the floor to Dean Doval. Dean Doval? Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Kane. I am deeply saddened by the sudden and very disturbing illness that has struck our campus. I can assure you that Dean Livia and all of us other deans are working as hard as we can to try and figure out what is going on. Thankfully, it seems like the illness is not going much farther, but that being said, we do want to make sure that we keep everybody 
educated, and as close to the core of the campus as possible. For those of you that may not have met them before, these are Dean's... And she goes down the row. She points out Dean Livia, who you have met before. Uh, Dean Livia has the ears of an elf, is tall, thin, young, and is wearing a white lab coat and half rim glasses. Then she points out Dean Price, who you met on your first day of semester. He is a half-orc with spectacles and is the Dean of Zinisage. Dean Doval herself is the Dean of Chromathar, and she is a drow with white hair and piercing blue eyes. And then the deans that you have not yet met are Dean Erasmus Sarson of Holvanum. He is a broad-shouldered human with a stern face and close-trimmed salt and pepper beard with big, bushy eyebrows. There's the Dean of Miss Varix, named Niall Tyson. He is a tall and thin black dragonborn with a mop of curly hair. And then there's the Dean of Loquatium, named Adele Swift Prince. She is a halfling with an undercut that falls long on the right side of her face. She is wearing a purple blazer and an earring in her left ear. And then of these deans, Dean Sarson steps forward and says, Yes, as Dean Doval said, we're restricting access to the campus and... Um, you are no longer allowed to access the Abbey to worship any of the gods there. We will be holding all religion and divination classes in the tower until further notice. And you just hear one student off to the right go, Uh-huh, but how am I supposed to charge my godly essence? That That's the only way that I get my god's power. My ears bleed. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a single drop of blood comes out of one of my ears. Whichever one is closest to where he is. Where are your ears? I think they're just like holes at the side of my head. (laughs) Dean Sarson says, We've been over this before, Tony. The god's essences don't recharge. They Once you find them, they have some magic in them, but the gods are gone. They're not coming back. It's been 80 years, so... You should probably put your faith in the surges that the artificers make in this class. That's why you're all here. Imagine your teacher just calling you out in class, being like, yeah, your god is dead. Get over it. (laughs) Dean Tyson then steps forward and says, we will also be restricting access to the Pyrocross field and uh, pretty much anywhere else on campus, aside from the dorms, the infirmary, and the tower itself. The pubs and markets will be closed until further notice. Dean, no. How could you betray me like this, since I am of your college? I'm sorry, Thad, but we don't even have enough members to cover the Pyrocross team at this time. Oh, my teammates. (laughs) But maybe, is there anywhere else in the dorms or that we have access to that we can still congregate with anybody that's healthy enough to talk game strategy and game plans? Is the weight room still open? There is the small weight room on the seventh floor of this tower, but the primary facility over at the Pyrocross field is closed. Looking around, (laughs) do we see anybody else on the team that's in here healthy, or is it literally just Thad and myself? It is literally just Thad and yourself. This is the worst day of my life. Well, Of my life. Thad, listen. (laughs) We'll have to just, we'll talk game plan in the dorm. <laughs> we'll use the Pyrocross table, like our foosball table that we have, to cover strategy and game <laughs> oh plan. Using the Pyrocross table, I guess. We will find a way to make it work. We'll have you doing push-ups and crunches on the dorm floor. <laughs> Which, how, does he do, how does he do crunches? You just rock on the back of his shell. I think so, I right? spend like an hour doing like one crunch. <laughs> Um, <laughs> as you guys are discussing and you're, you're trying to figure out a way to do strategy, down in the front couple of rows, you see Titus turn around and he <sighs> says, in response to Thad's comment, the worst day of your life? How could that even be possible? You probably had something to do with this. I'm literally the captain of the Pyrocross team. Why would I sabotage my one true love? You Dumbass. How is it possible that all that you, all four of you, are not sick? 
You're the only well, you're study group sick. that isn't sick. What about you? You're not sick, you prick. The rest of my group has fallen ill. Oh, but not you. Hmm, interesting. Maybe if you were uh, spending time with your group, um, and all of you guys were together, like we were, we didn't get sick because we weren't around other people. We were just around each other. Because we were studying. Oh, you weren't around other people? Well, where were you? Oh, we uh, we went to visit uh, Nanya. I'm sorry, none of you? None of your business! <laughs> Got him! Usually have to follow that up with a bitch, but... <laughs> Respectful. <laughs> We're in class, so I'm trying to be a little respectful. It's fair, it's fair. And, uh, Titus, why don't you not take any time to accuse my friend of anything? It's the best pun I got. That's the best, like, burn. It's just nothing. It's very weak play. Yeah, I'm Manny. That was, that mean that makes no sense, even as a sentence. <laughs> You'll get him next time. <laughs> <laughs> anything you say, number two. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> really never gonna recover from that. Dean Swift Prince steps forward and says, Hello. It's me. It is me. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be Dean Adele. <laughs> Can you save me? <laughs> Wait, is it Adele Swift Prince? Is that what you... Yes, her name is Adele Swift Prince. <sighs> All right. Is this? Is it gonna be a mixture between Adele puns, Taylor Swift puns, and Prince puns? But that's all you can speak in. Wait, I missed the Taylor puns. Swift one. I was no, it's Adele Swift Prince is this person's uh, name. Okay. So, <laughs> are you the problem? It's you. <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> me. <laughs> are you gonna tell us to shake it off? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and then go party like it's 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Shake it off. You don't have to be cool. You don't have to be rich. Ain't no particular sign. Oh, but... <laughs> well, class, this seems like the perfect day to dress up like hipsters. Man, he starts bobbing his head. Like, <laughs> there's, there's some real rhythm to this. She goes, you, go to the tension. I knew you were in trouble when you walked in. <laughs> it's kind of chilly. I'll put on my cardigan. Yeah. Yeah, sh she says... You don't have to accuse each other. There's no particular sign that this was caused by any one of you. But we do need you to continue your studies so that you can... Stunning lack of puns in that. There's a lot of talking and not a lot of lyrics <laughs> that <laughs> fit perfectly. Um, but she does say, you all need to study. And so... You can study whatever you would like today. Just ask the desk in front of you what sort of book you would like to read. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. I'll just go set fire to the rain and roll in the deep over here while I, you know, go through books. It might be 22 and listen to our song, The Purple Rain. <laughs> Does that do anything for you? I'm kind of in the mood for a love story. Uh, <laughs> Got any fire, books on those? <laughs> set fire to the purple rain? Yeah, set fire to the purple rain. I'm going to go read Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> oh, I like the way you sound in the morning. Oh, no. What? <laughs> Hard on. <laughs> go for a walk, chase some, some pavement, as it were. <laughs> I just look at all these other students and third cheer captain and I'm in the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> They're in short skirts, and I'm in t-shirts. I wonder if you know. Oh, God. All right, well, What start. color is that, that jacket you're wearing? Is it, is it raspberry? You have a, a beret to match it? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wasn't sick. I was about to bust that one out. Raspberry beret. But we also don't have to go to any classes. Hey, just go easy on me, okay? <laughs> Would you like to take it easy and not go to class? I was just looking for someone like you. Like, this, this is a cool professor. I could tell by the way she parked her cart sideways. <laughs> you guys are doing much better at this than I am. <laughs> like I said, Paul, it's there. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Dean Doval steps forward and says, Anywho, anywho, all of you... Go ahead and choose something that you would like to investigate, something that you would like to learn about, and the deans will be down here in case you have any questions, along with Professor Kane, who is going to be available for any artificing questions, if you have them. 
I would like to quietly ask Dixon here. If the whole campus is shut off and we can't go anywhere, then how are we supposed to get all of the herbs for our hors d'oeuvres? Are you talking Check about your drugs? pockets. <laughs> <laughs> talking about our cooking clan. You don't have them in your pockets? I haven't been able to go out in a while. I've been stuck with you guys. We used them all. I have to go get them. Why don't you go get them? I guess we don't have to go to these classes, do we? I'm going to sneak off to go get some herbs. You're going to ditch class to go get the herb. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they say I'm the degenerate. All right. Uh, give me a stealth roll to sneak out of class because this one was mandated because of the curfew. Hey, you could sign in first. Just write your name in the blank space and you'll be good to go so that they know that you were here. Yeah, I'm going to do this correctly. Can I get an advantage <laughs> for having my friends help me sneak out of class for some reason? Manny would not. He wants you in class. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, if he sneaks out and another student sneaks out, there will only be 22 of us. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't blame me when you get caught. Those were good. Those were good. I, I'm not upset at you two. <laughs> those were good. <laughs> So I only I, I rolled a 13. I mean, I might even be able to sweet talk my way out of it if I get caught. Who's to say? I'm adorable with a fat face and a high-pitched voice. How does that make sense? As you move out of the row of chairs, I mean, you're, you're, you're tiny, so you start making your way down so that you can leave out the back door. And then you hear behind you, Excuse me, uh, Milo, I believe your name is? You thought you could get out, but not this time around. And um, and who is speaking to me? This would be uh, Dean Swift Prince. But she was just over there talking to them. <laughs> She's at the front of the class. She's so swift. Uh, God damn it. I hate you. That was good. Oh, Dean, the thing is, is how the, the class that I want to do is the class for the adventuring 101 and how can i go out and get my my herbs and ingredients for my cooking if the whole campus is closed dean doval looks up from where she was standing helping some other student and says well you can read up on new recipes if you want to there milo well i mean i read the books i just need to try them out to see how they taste cooking is more how you how you you know feel the flavor it's more the experience of cooking so that you know how to mix the ingredients. You can get the ingredients. Well, then why don't you come on down here to the front and we can uh, set up a cooking area for you so that you can practice practically. But with what ingredients? Uh, we will send one of the deans down to the WAC to get you the proper ingredients. Mm. Okay. So you tried to get out, but she was ready for it. And I'm, and I'm not <laughs> fronted. <laughs> so, uh, is anybody else going to ask for anything or try to do anything before I move on to the next thing? You said we could just, like, check out any book we want? Yes, uh, you were told to just ask the desk for the book that you need. The desk, like a physical desk is just going to populate the books I need? They, you were told to ask the desk for the book that you need. It's a magic school. All right. Desk? <laughs> I would like, I would, what were the, so I know that, uh, what's his nuts, Donnie had told me about books that like for the surges to learn more about, I guess how the surges are put together, why he would think that we are the surge. I guess what are the names of those books? He did not give you names of those books. He said one no, thing. He's like, go check out these books. And then he just never told me what the books were. That's good. He said that there are books in the library. And then he gave you one word before... Meredith came back in. That's where he gave us a title. But uh, are you going to make me try to recall the one word? Yeah, did you not write it down? Apricot. Yeah, you dumb um, bit. The, the turgid surges. Um, Wells. Is there an author's name? Was it Wells? No, it was not an author's name. Uh, Argo? <clears throat> no, I, I don't think I wrote wrote it down. I missed, I missed the word. Um, you remember that... The word that Donnie had given you was Morin Bell. Morin Bell. You didn't remember that, bro? I remember that. Oh, yeah, now it... <laughs> fuck. Desk, do you have any forbidden books? Oh, no. Well, I'll say, uh, 
desk. Can I get books on surges cross reference with the word Morin Bell in the title or author name, please? Nothing appears on the desk. But next to you, on Thad's desk, there is a piece of paper that says, please be more specific. Why is it on Thad's desk? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thad's desk. (laughs) And I kind of just scoot it a little closer to him. Wait, is it is it a desk where it's attached to my seat? Yes. Okay, then I go... That's him scooting the chair. Um, the notch is making the noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could just... have been a million things with you being a turtle. Yeah. Unless, wait, did you make a request for your desk first? I haven't said shit. Oh, <laughs> Yes, you did. Wait, what? Yes, you did. Didn't you ask for a book? Wait, what? You asked what for any forbidden texts. Oh. <laughs> Never mind then. And I scoop my desk back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that, what about forbidden books with more, like... With pictures, nice. With Morin Bell in the name. Because yes. it might have been in the restricted section of the library. Yes, cross-reference forbidden and Morn Bell. <laughs> with images. It was Morn. Yes. Turn off safe search. <laughs> Uh, On your desk appears a fairly thick tome, and it is called The Rise and Desolation of the Wizarding Community Morinbell. I really wish I was back with the group for this. (laughs) That is such a long (laughs) book title. (laughs) We're just going to Hogwarts. It's no big deal. I pick it up and I leaf through it for pictures real quick. (laughs) You don't see very many pictures. There's a whole lot of writing, but... In the middle, there is a large etching that's double-paged, and it showcases a ruined city, and there is a cyclone of clouds hovering over the top of this city. Real quick, the book name was The Rise and Desolation of the Wizarding Community Morn Bell. Okay. Yeah, it's two words off. Yeah, if I would have known there was a magical desk that could give me a book on anything I wanted, I definitely would have stayed. <laughs> now I'm up at the front just like roasting weenies on a freaking bonfire. You were told. <laughs> As Thad is flipping through the book, I'd like to reach over and grab the book from Thad. Be like, Thad, I'm taking that. And I say, you belong with me. And I start to <laughs> flip through the pages myself. <laughs> And uh, study the image with the uh, clouds and everything that you had just described. Okay. I would like to wander back over to this group. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm too you... stunned by the uh, the pun to have a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what is that book, Manny? And don't shh. Be quiet about it. Oh. It's uh. What is that book, Manny? It's one I'm not supposed to have. <laughs> But the desk gave it to us. The desk is will just give out forbidden <laughs> books, huh? The desk will give out any book we want? I guess so, even if it's forbidden. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to go desk. off and do some whispering to the desk. <laughs> Search. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> what kind of erotica <laughs> bullshit are you about to ask for? <laughs> Search. Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Magazines. <laughs> Player across 2017. Play Orc. Cross reference <laughs> Dean Levy. <laughs> Play orc. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Instead of a Playboy magazine. <laughs> Nothing appears on your desk. Damn it. <laughs> she was definitely using a stage name. Half orc, full bard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as you guys are messing around with the desks, and Milo has now come back. The door opens, and in walks Leong. Okay. I don't care. I'm still talking to the desk. No, Lee just got back from the infirmary. I think that would be something we would want to look at. Guys, he survived his stabbing by you. It's Lee. (laughs) I'm more concerned about the desk. (laughs) Hmm. So why is that? Hmm. You're not concerned that they're awake? This isn't a conversation we're having right now. This is not a game, but still recorded talk about what we're doing. I want to ask my desk, did Milo do it? (laughs) (laughs) 
Nothing appears. Answer me, you bastard. <laughs> oh, a magical desk in front of me. What do you know? So Lee walks in and uh, Dean Livia meets him halfway down the stairs and she kind of like puts her hand on his shoulder and guides him to a chair and, and is whispering to him and he takes his bag and then starts unloading things and you see him whisper to the desk and then a book appears on it. Is there an empty seat by him? Or do we have an empty seat by us? Either or. Yes, to both. It is a fairly empty auditorium, after all. Oh, I thought we would have just all crowded and not left any space in between our seats. No, so we sat in the back like cool kids, so we've got space. All right. Lee. Hey, Lee. He looks up and turns to see you. I would like to just, like, wave him our way with my trunk. Like a come here motion. Oh, come hither with your trunk? Come slither over here? I guess, yeah. Can you make your trunk (laughs) slither like a snake? I'm sure I can. <laughs> I've never tried, but... Never tried? If I had one of those things, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> I could helicopter, and I start swinging it, and I knock pages <laughs> off the desk. Oh, look what you made me do. Uh. <laughs> Lee nods up to you, puts his things together, and comes up to sit next to you, Manny. He says, hey, guys. Uh, g- good to see that you're not sick. Uh, how you feeling, buddy? Oh, I, f- I feel fine. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah? I, I it. Uh, do you... Do, 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 do you remember anything? Uh, I mean, I, I, I remember what I had for breakfast, if that's what you mean. Um, I remember mean, Milo stabbing you? What? No. Milo never stabbed me. Did you? Are you sure? Oh my goodness, Leong, you're okay. Wow, he definitely stabbed him. Look at that reaction. <laughs> Suspicious. What? No, I, uh, I'm i so glad you're okay. What do you guys mean that I'm okay? I found you collapsed in the wherever I did. In the place that you stabbed him <laughs> immediately after stabbing him? <laughs> Say, I found you collapsed there, and I tried to... I, I even used up my surge to try to heal you. It didn't work, and then I had to go get help, and we took you to the infirmary, and... Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, I see what's happening here. What did you have for breakfast today? I had eggs. The hospital, the, the infirmary doesn't serve eggs for breakfast. Oh, I see what's happening here. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's Maui. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you remember being in the infirmary? No, I don't think so. No? Hmm. How did you get here? I walked from from your from, from your house from my dorm. Well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he woke up from his dorm and walked over here instead of in the infirmary where we left him. And yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I do remember going down into the basement, and I must have slipped and hit my head or something because I don't I don't remember. Getting back to my dorm. It was from from when he was injured. Didn't we see like any sort of like cuts or scars or no, like because some... I healed him. Yeah, but wasn't there like wounds in his back or no? As we're having this yes. conversation, I would like to peer around at the deans to see if any of them are watching this conversation with intent. Uh perception. Twenty four. Real perceptive boy. Uh, you do not see any deans paying attention. Do I see anyone paying attention? Titus. Mmm. Titus knows Milo stabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It doesn't want to say for some reason. Lee, Lee, here's here's the deal. The other day, we we were on our way to the infirmary actually to check in on somebody there. And we had found you passed out on the ground and just had simply taken you to go check you into the infirmary. So, I'm not sure. You're right. You must have. You must. You must have hit your head if you don't recall that. But do you remember? Do you recall at all where you were going or what you were doing uh, down on that level? Well, I was going to see Professor Professor Kane because you you kind of got it in my head that. I wasn't going to be too good on the final. 
I haven't been the greatest student, so, uh, yeah, I went down to the basement to see him, and that's it. And then, um, I woke up this morning, and uh, I went and got eggs from the whack, and, uh, I had this pendant on around my neck, and he pulls out a pendant from underneath his shirt, and it has an eyeball on it. And you, is that something you typically wear, or you just woke up and that was on? I woke up and it was on. Do I know what it is? You just left it on? You're just like, huh, build new jewelry, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty dope, right? I, actually, Dixon, you'd probably like this, right? No. But it's, it's gnarly. <laughs> it's gnarly. <laughs> Have you tried taking it off? Yeah. And he takes it off. You want it? Yeah, let me see that for a second. And I look at it. I say, you look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> does it do anything? <laughs> no, it does not. Damn it. Dixon, let me let me see that real quick. And I would like to investigate or take a look at it. And do I... Would, would I recognize it at all? Or like the symbol or anything else like that? You can roll an arcana check for me. Can I roll an arcana or some sort of a check to see if I've come across this type of pendant? Yes, you can as well. Is it arcana for me as well? Yes. A 19. Arcana is plus zero. I rolled a 14. Neither of you are familiar with what this is. It looks like an eyeball that has been preserved and lacquered and is on a simple chain. I would like to... Can I make a magical copy of it? Actually, let me see if I can't even do that. And while he's looking that up, I'd like to ask the desk for any books. Reverse image search. Desk. Yeah, desk. <laughs> Mr. Desk or Mrs. Desk or whatever desk. Um, you just like drop it into one of the drawers and it's like, analyze this object. <laughs> desk. Find me a book of magical symbols or pendants, please. And I guess if I could be more specific to desk, um, if you know of any magical symbols or pendants that have eyeballs etched into them, that would be cool too. So it's not something that has an etching of an eyeball, it is literally an eyeball. Oh, desk. I refine my search to literally an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> For magical arcana symbols and pendants. So I want to look at Leong and be like, so you just woke up with your memory partially missing, you have a, a literal eyeball around your neck, and you're just like, cool. That sound about right? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? Well, listen, <laughs> it's probably smart that you were looking for extra credit. I'm happy that I guess my honest opinion made you seek out more education, so, so that's great. But yeah, you should really ask some questions here, so <laughs> we'll uh, we'll help you look into this. And back to desk. <laughs> Magical desk with all of the answers that we can help us with for any part of this campaign. What do you got for me? <laughs> when you ask that question, nothing has appeared for a while, and then all of a sudden there is a stack of ten books all of them have different names. One's an encyclopedia that's like 2,000 pages thick. Then you have another one that says History of the Eyes of Ralvaria. And then you have another one that is the cults and dictators of Belishkir. And then you wind up with, I mean, and it just goes on and on. There's all sorts of things, and you can tell that eyes show up in a lot of different magical arcana and in a lot of different instances in history. Is there anything weird with the pupil that you can tell it's like a reptilian eye or a bird eye or whatever? Can you tell what the eye is? It looks like a human eye. Ooh. All right, well, looks like uh, Manny has some skimming to do, so <laughs> I will look for... I feel like a lot of times in those sort of books, like when you are looking at pendants and symbols and everything they're actually like are sketched out in the pages so that's what i'm going to be hoping to skim and find something similar that explains where or what this could have come from so that's what manny's going to be doing for i guess a hot second okay so while you start doing that 
Dixon, did you wind up actually taking the eye from Leong, or did you just look at it? No, I took it. Okay, so it's in your possession now? Yeah. Okay, are you gonna- You're fucked. <laughs> are you, well, no. Are you gonna hold on to it, or are you gonna give it back to Lee? Uh, I'm gonna hang on to it. I'm gonna say, hey, Lee, I'm gonna hang on to this for a second. I will give it back to you after I look at it, because your memory missing is slightly concerning. Cool, 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 cool. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, maybe if if I don't know what's going on, I should probably go see Dean Livia in the infirmary. That that would probably be smart, right? Right, but also, if anyone asks you where your pennant went, you let us know who asked you, okay? And, uh, don't tell them that we have it, just for now. We'll, once we, once we know what this is from, we'll fill you in, okay? Yeah, alright, it'll, it'll be a secret. Yes, it'll be our dirty little secret. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know why I said it like that, that makes me sound like a child. Or an all-American reject. Or, or that, yeah. I just, <laughs> I just want to, kind of, like, I kind of want to be in on your group, because my group's sick right now and before that they didn't really like me so ah. and you you saw where we were sitting in the class right you want to be a cool kid well you're you're a cool kid now hell yeah yeah thanks guys i i appreciate it it now that i'm thinking about it more this whole not remembering what happened is is really kind of disconcerting yeah it, that was what? my word of the day on my calendar that's it's awesome way to way to use it one last question. You said that you were you were supposed to be helping Fackham Kane. He was going to help you out with with school a little bit more. Was there anything anything else that we, it sounds like you probably went to his uh, went to his office to ask for some help? I mean, was there anything else that seemed any bit of a concern to you or questionable at all before you know you went to go meet up with him and you had a fall? Was anybody following you or did he seem suspicious for any reasons? No. But okay. I don't know if you guys have noticed, when I went down in the basement, I didn't really want to go down there. There were some rats. Did you guys encounter any rats? Were they like big rats that walk on two feet and look <laughs> like failed wizards? <laughs> the large humanoid <laughs> rats of <laughs> people. What? No. Oh, so like actual rats, huh? Yeah. Did they have four turtles with them? <laughs> no. Oh. There's only one turtle I know, and that's, uh, that's Thad. Hey, everybody knows that, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Popular over here. I smack the jukebox sitting next to me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> You're just leaning on the wall and you elbow it. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, what uh, what book did you take out, out of curiosity? Oh, um, he shows it to you and it says, Bardic Inspiration, a series of songs and ditties to improve your magic about jack and diane, jack and diane <laughs> sucking on chili dogs <laughs> <laughs> wait till you get to the chapter on chili dogs that that's a good read you, you'll enjoy that one but all right well it was good uh good chatting with you i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to reading this a little bit but uh, like like i said we'll, we'll we'll keep in touch with you um but let us know let us know if you come across anything I hope you get better, and just remember, life goes on. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, that's an odd thing to say, but yeah. And he goes off back to his other seat and uh, opens up the book to start reading. Spo spoiler alert for him. Jack and Diane are never, ever getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's stick to the basics this week. What do you say? I am Paul Camper, your Death Saving Bros DM, and this is your episode mid-roll. We are quickly approaching your last chance to become a patron at the Shade Arrow tier and get exclusive physical rewards. If you support us at the $25 tier on patreon.com slash deathsavingbros, for at least three of the last four months in 2023, you will be eligible to get your hands on some special stuff. We just shipped out our last fulfillment, which included Dwarven Forge tabletop materials and blood-red resin dice. But I'll tell you what, 
we already picked out our rewards for the winter fulfillment, and I think they may even be better and will definitely be something you want to hold for yourself. Hint, hint. Pretty vague, but maybe you have a guess or two. Why not let us know on social media, at Death Saving Bros, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Reddit. However, uh, speaking more about Patreon, any level of Patreon support keeps this show going. And in return, you'll get access to extra content, including bloopers, pre-show recordings, and extra episodes, all starting at just $2 a month. Although, if you can't commit to a monthly pledge, we completely understand, we do still have that awesome band tee from Dixon's favorite fantasy emo band, Thy Apothecary Courtship, which is available with all of our other merchandise at redbubble.com. Simply search Death Saving Bros to check out everything that we have available. Now, before I get you back to the episode, I need to give a shout out to all those people who have been making this show possible. Those who have joined our Patreon at the $5 tier get a shout out at the end of the show, but the following individuals have pledged to support us financially at the $10 tier or higher, so they get their supporter shout out right now. Ryan Cushman, Gene L. Jackson, and Gavin Knox. Thank you all for your support. Without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Anyway, since I do have a cooking class going on, I'm going to uh, say summon my little Toby boy here, and then also see if he has any ideas of how to, uh, any any books I should possibly ask the magic desk for, or uh, uh, I guess it could also be a good opportunity to see what all he figured out when he was investigating El Pipos. Yeah, that's a good idea, checking in on what he learned from end of last episode. So, so what does my fire spirit tell me? So you can check in with Toby, but Toby doesn't actually speak. So I, I don't telepathically talk to Toby? No, you don't actually speak to Toby like that. Can uh, Toby I mean, do I a did... big charade? Can he just like get up on your desk and I was act say, it all out? <laughs> it's either going to be one of two things, Paul, where we just accept that I've already broken a few of the game rules with Toby, where I try to just keep him out 100% of the time, and also the fact that you know we can just let that go where I just have a bond with this creature and we are a thing. Or we can try to play a game of charades where Toby tries to act out if he saw anything. And I will play along like it's always been this way and I will guess very genuinely. I picture like I watched Enchanted for the first time this weekend like the Disney movie. I'm proud of you. And uh, the little chipmunk like was able to talk <laughs> but what is it said the real world it can't talk so it just squeaks a lot and I picture that's how you're trying to interpret Toby talking is just noises but you can't hear toby so it starts acting stuff out yeah like the thing of it is like a groot and rocket situation uh -huh. yeah so like a lot of the things that you've been doing with toby and a lot of the things that we do on this podcast is for flavor text i'll let you guys do whatever kind of fits the the moment yeah. and when we're in when we're in combat i still have him follow combat rules right but um since toby does actually have information to impart i'm going to ask you to try and do charades with him let's do it so when you ask toby hey what happened with el pipos uh toby then starts flaring a little bit and you see toby shift into his cat form and start walking and then he goes up on his hind paws and points one up into the air and then you see him uh transform into a bird and the bird is flying left, right, left, right, left, right, and then he'll stop in midair and then fly down and into the wall and then, like, disappear through the wall and then reappear at your feet. Oh, okay, I picture think. Anchorman, you pooped in the refrigerator <laughs> and you ate <laughs> the, the whole, whole wheel, wheel of cheese? cheese? <laughs> I'm not even mad. Good job. That's impressive. <laughs> Say, depending on how <laughs> Paul was talking there, I was going to try to do like interpretive messages, but 
you were kind of given like a vision oh, okay. as it was. Sorry, you can go ahead and do interpretations along the way. No, it, it, it's okay. I'll play it how it goes. He does this whole charade and it's okay. No, no, no. Go, go ahead and uh, give, give me your impressions. What did you think was going on? Jimmy fell in the well. It, it, this whole podcast just comes naturally for me. I don't know unless it happens. <laughs> okay, so I'll start over. You see Toby transform into his cat form. Okay, so you're sneaking around. And he starts walking along and gets up on his hind paws and then points up. Okay, so you stop and... Is it the pipes that go up? You went... Like, the pipes went up, you're still following the pipes. And then, and then Toby jumps up and down. Okay, good. And uh, transforms into a bird and then flies left, right, left, right. Oh, man. Are, are, are these more directions or are... <clears throat> Did, did something really crazy happen when you went up? Are these directions? Are these directions? You can... Toby stops in midair and then flaps twice. Black cocked out, black cocked out. That's good, that's good. <laughs> and then... Twice is yes, so it's just directions. He's flying a bunch of lefts and rights. The pipes go all over the place. And then Toby flies down and towards the wall and then disappears through the wall. I... <laughs> so you just... just big... Big drop down. You've, these are some really confusing directions. Is there a is there a hidden door somewhere? Is that why you're going all the way through? I can't be asking you questions. You're not here. Toby reappears at your feet. Oh, there you are. And Toby doesn't flare up. He gets smaller. Okay. Is it? Uh, are we just more doing more directions? You're doing up, down, left, right, left. Like this is the exact direction we have to follow, Toby. He flares a little, then flares back down. We need to get you your driver's license. Um, <laughs> so, you, you're a bird now. You're flying left and right. That part is still direction. He flares. And then you fly down more directions. Flare. And then you go all the way through a wall. Big flare. Is this by chance on station nine and three quarters? Toby shifts into a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if he could shift it to a question mark the directions are Why doesn't he just spell it out? Because this is more fun <laughs> Yeah, we're, we play games all the time <laughs> What? Do you have any guesses? Are we even... Wait, did... He's right in front of all of us We're playing this game Oh, I thought you like left No, I mean we're having walked a... outside to like talk No, I summoned, him, I summoned him at the table We're having a conversation oh, Yeah, I just... <laughs> I, I thought I was reading books I wasn't paying any attention to this You probably still are <laughs> So are you saying you have uh, gotten Thad and Dixon's attention to help you interpret? <laughs> I might have. I don't know. But Thad seems pretty interested. I'm just looking at this like I have no fucking idea what his uh, his little fire friend is on about. He's confused? No, I think I think someone's stuck in a well. <laughs> There's magic down the well. Do the pipes go <laughs> through a wall? I think it's just a small talk, work in the weather. <laughs> when Manny says that, Toby flares really bright and crawls over to Manny and sits at his feet. <laughs> yeah, I was like barely paying attention <laughs> out the side of my guys. He flies through a wall. The pipes go through a wall. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's <laughs> and it. He flares up to that. <laughs> I don't think that's it. I think either. I mean, unless he's been sneaking Toby some treats, I think that's a good indication that he might be onto something. We just. Why is? I think. Why he knows is this a big, uh, big news? Didn't we just assume? pipes go into the wall they gotta go somewhere toby what happens after the pipes go <laughs> into the wall <laughs> it's kind of what pipes do do you loot did you lose the the trail after that or were you able to uh when you ask where did you lose the trail after that toby flares mm. it seems that's about as long as he had before he had to uh be unsummoned so we have to go through the pipes we just have to follow them how are we going to get through a wall? It just so happens I have a blueprint of the school grounds. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, Toby pulls out a big roll of maps of the school grounds that he had secretly been asking the desk. You said Toby. He meant Milo. Oh, did I say Toby? <laughs> Can I Michael Schofield this shit and just get it tattooed on my back <laughs> for the blueprints of it all? <laughs> just get the <laughs> prison break. I never watched it. Oh, it's a good, it's a good show. And uh, yeah, so Milo does pull out a 
big wad of maps that he had asked the desk for off camera. And I'll say, I can find out where these uh, pipes go to, and I'll just kind of play them around and then tuck them back into my pocket, because I don't know if I'm supposed to have them. Yeah, are we supposed to return these books to the desk (laughs) before we leave, or are we allowed to take them with us to do further studying in our dorm rooms? So just as you're wondering that aloud, Professor Kane steps to the front of the room and says, Well, now, we're just about wrapped up for the lecture this morning. But before you go, I wanted to remind you of a few things. First of all, any books that you have checked out from the desks should be reported up front. Otherwise, please place them back on your desk and they will disappear as soon as you leave the room. And I would also like to remind you to make sure that you continue to practice your surge making, because as you begin to increase your skill with making surges, you will be able to get surges that can cast higher level spells. Right now, you should, most of you, only have a surge that can cast a level one spell, except for Manny. Manny does have a surge that can cast two level one spells. Yeah, boy. (laughs) So, yes, um, if you're done with your books, leave them on your desk. Otherwise, come on down to the front and check them out. And you all have a good day. Remember, the curfew is in effect, so stick within the tower, your dorms, or the infirmary. Thank you. My stew! I'm still cooking it on the bonfire up front! It disappears as you're saying that, because Dean Doval has just snapped her fingers and it goes away. Wait, my whole stew? Yep. The pot doesn't just, like, fall to the floor? My, all of my food is gone. Yep. And that, 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 that was, that was my dinner. That that was my food. Um, I hmm. before we leave, I would like to ask the desk desk one one more book real quick. Uh, I'd like to cross reference yearbook with Dean Doval. <laughs> <laughs> you get a yearbook that is dated fifty years prior, and you see braces. <laughs> So I, I, I'd like to pop it open to. Actually, no. I'd like to. I'd like to check it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to this later. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with checking out my book as well. I'm not too worried about it. Like I would think that I would be hesitant because I don't want really everybody to know that I'm investigating what I'm investigating. But I'm just gonna do it anyways and not try to hide it at all. I think it's fine. You're going to get us murdered. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> you check it out. Um, is everybody else checking out their things? Uh, yes, I am checking out my... Stew. My Magic and Meals, Tales of Goodberry. Okay. That is another book that you asked for from the desk, and uh, it was given to you. Off when I was whispering to the desk, because I found out it did secret cool stuff, I secretly asked for a bunch of secret texts. But this was a legit one, because I do want to make delicious food for all of you. Like my stew that went missing! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then... Dean (laughs) Duvall! You run off to pick a bone with her, and uh, Thad, you check out the yearbook? Yes, sir. (laughs) Okay. As you're checking it out, Dean Swift Prince glances down and sees it and says, Oh, I remember when they said, let me photograph you in this light. Oh, you're in here too? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I was so scared to face my fears. Oh, god damn it. That's an interesting development. I would have, have uh, imagined it in my wildest dreams. It was just like a movie. It was just like a song. Let me guess, when you were young? Yes, when we were young. Who'd have thunk? Did you have that uh, red lipstick classic <laughs> thing that they like? <laughs> You'll have to look and find <laughs> out. Were you in a short skirt or a t-shirt? <laughs> Uh, she walks off, and then, uh, <laughs> Manny, you are writing down your list, and as you turn away, you see that Titus leans over the paper to see what you had checked out. I guess as I'm writing it and he leans over, I'm going to... Just cover it with your elbow and be like, don't. Yeah, I was going to just kind of like palm, <laughs> like put it on top <laughs> as I turn. Here's a question I had, actually. So do you have fingers, or is it like elephant just like, you know... It's it's Clubs. it's uh human like hands but elephant like feet. So you just go wait. What about your arms? Do you have wrists? Yeah. <laughs> How far does this go? It's it's full. It's 
All right, so it's human arms and hands, oh, but elephant legs and feet. That's double. <laughs> <laughs> what about the torso? It's yeah, that's it's like a elephant chest but a human waist. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> elephant chest, human waist, elephant legs, <laughs> human arms. Elephant God, head. your hips can't lie. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> What a win in hand. <laughs> yes, this has been a point of contention multiple times. Because I know you had the trunk, and you're like, I want to give him three middle fingers. I'm like, that just looked like you raising them both your arms in your trunk. <laughs> I raise my stubs at you. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Anyways, yeah, Titus, uh, what are you checking out? Well, I'm not afraid to hide it. And he puts his tome on the desk, and you can see that it is called Artificing Advanced. Yeah, that's a pretty basic read right there, but I'm sure I'm sure you'll find some value in it. Did he take another book out by chance that he's not showing us? Can I, like, look through his bag? Give me a sleight of hand check while Manny and Titus are having this conversation. Love it. I would like to assist by adding in under Titus's name on the books being checked out. Ah, uh, the book dealing with elf reptile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you forced that plug in there because it was needed. I rolled a uh, 17. Sure, you start rifling through his bag and you don't see any other books in there. Was there anything shiny and of interest? I would have noticed. You see a gold pen. It's mine. <laughs> okay, so you take the gold pen. Unfortunately, I think I have to. Just based on my character flaw. <laughs> <laughs> Titus leans over the paper and sees the elf rectile dysfunction and says, Ha! I should have known that you would have stooped to such a base insult. Doesn't mean it ain't true. Doesn't mean that you didn't have something to do with this illness. And he scoops up his things and leaves. Titus, we don't need to cheat to beat you. I've been beating you all year all year long. So you could stop assuming that we had something to do with the sickness. All year long? Ha! It's only been a week and a half, maybe. Sorry, let me rephrase. I've been beating you for the last three years consecutively. And I, yeah, already off to a better start than you this year. I don't know if that's something you say to another person. Oh, I say it. I bet he's not even on the Elf Rectile Dysfunction book. He's still on the first one. Ogres and boners. Oh, no. <laughs> Titus walks off without another word. It's a bad series. <laughs> <laughs> so where would you guys like to go next that uh, class is done? I mean, we can only really go to the infirmary and our dorm, right? No, oh, and the small weights room. Yeah, we could. So how long do we have until curfew? Curfew is going to go into effect around 7 o'clock in another half a day. It's about noon right now. Can we go back to our dorms and in our like bunks make it look like people are there? Like how people put like basketballs and like whatever, but we just make it look like all of us are in bed and then we <laughs> sneak off to follow the pipes. You know you're an elephant, right? The pipes are in the main tower. I was just gonna. Oh. T I was just going to tug on Manny's uh, clothing and be like, "Hey, do you want to follow the pipes?" I turn and my tail hits you, and you go fucking yeeted. Um, <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> I scurry back over. So. <laughs> Do you want to go uh, investigate those pipes? What was that? And I like lean down to listen better and I just open up my giant ass ear. Did you open up your giant ass? <laughs> giant ass ear. Oh, thank you. Did you say something about the pipes? <laughs> yes, Danny boy. Would you like to go investigate the pipes? Um, I think that's what Toby was telling us was there was actually... A way that we should follow. Despite his directions, he can always just bring us there. Do well first. We need to figure out a way to get through the wall. Not well, that's not you wall. That's why we good because you can't get through the wall. I know. I thought we were like whispering. <laughs> when you come us. to it and you can't go through it, and you can't knock it down. <laughs> hey, the wall. Do you think that uh, you could be stopped by a wall, perchance? 
I mean, we're both immovable objects. So when one immovable object meets another immovable object, nothing happens. <laughs> neither of them move. <laughs> when, when one is face to face with the other, it's very anticlimactic. Nothing happens. <laughs> Do you think you can get through a wall for us? I can put in a good word as a fellow wall. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be good enough, Manny. I, I mean, before we, you know, risk being out past curfew and everything else, because we don't know how long we'll be on, we should probably make sure we have a way of getting through the wall to continue to follow the pipes once we get to that point. And I'm not sure, you know, if anybody has anything that would do the trick for us to get through <laughs> a solid wall. We might not even have to make it to curfew. We can probably get this done if we go now. I just want to make sure before we go s- sneaking around somewhere where we're probably not supposed to be that we have the means of, you know, not coming that far just to get stopped. Like, we need to make sure we have a plan. Did you? Did you take those blueprints? What blueprints? Wink. So do you have them? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. And I wink really hard with my other eye. Milo, <laughs> why are you winking, blinking so hard? Oh, there's just something going on. That allergy season, I guess. Right? Wink. Is something wrong with it? Do you have something in your eyes? I think he's hitting on you. <laughs> your eyes are the size of softballs if you're trying to wink. It's not subtle. Hey, Dixon, can you get through a wall? A wink. <laughs> wink. <laughs> you know, Manny, you're just... I sigh. You don't wink. I sigh, I thad. I don't want to try <laughs> to go through the wall. Not the wall, just the a wall. wall. There's <laughs> only one wall that I know of. Certainly love your all of a sudden school pride. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the one that all the stuff was written on in our dorm. What? Nothing. So, yes, I could probably get through a wall. We just, okay. need to, we just need to blow the pipes up. There you go. Manny, we have our way through the wall. We just need to go down there. That's fine. As long as you bring the the blueprints that I have a strong feeling you're lying about not having on you. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm having a hard time to follow what you're doing. I just hope Manny, you have the blueprints. Manny, Manny. And I put a, I put a hand on his knee. Like it's his shoulder and I'm comforting him. (laughs) Manny, it would be very bad if a student somehow had the blueprints for the school. There's no way I would be able to hold on to something like that. Wink. (laughs) I I just... (laughs) But I think we'll have no trouble. And as I'm saying that, it's like no trouble, Pat, Pat, getting through this. You didn't wink wink that time. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't understand, but let's just... If if you're that comfortable and confident, we have Toby, which I know that we can communicate with Toby. You're right. He could probably relead us the way through to get to where we were at, but in case yeah. there was any other ways that he didn't get to investigate, you know, there might be a better path, but I guess we'll see. We'll go and follow, follow the pipes. But you said it's like midday, I guess... Do we want to stop back at the dorm to... I think we should have lunch first, yes. I just have to find out where my stew went! <laughs> I need to protein load. Alright guys, we can we can grab some we can grab some grub at the whack <laughs> on our way, considering I'm pretty sure the pipes were in the basement of the whack. Um, <laughs> no, the whack is in the arc shine, and the arc shine basement is where the pipes are. But it's very important that before we go to the basement we should get lunch which means first we have to go to Dean Duvall's office why do we have to go to the Dean's office for she sent my stew somewhere that I was making for everyone I mean (laughs) I want to lean down and be like I'm sorry buddy and I just I have the most stern and solemn face you'll ever see on me and I look deep into your eyes and I just put a hand on your head, it tousle, tousle your hair gently. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You'll you'll have another chance to make make some stew for us. How about how about when all this is said and done, and we see where the pipes go, 
we get you what you need to make some stew. It uh, it might have been a little overcooked because I forgot about it. Well, that, see, that's fine. You, you know, our first time tasting your stew, you don't want it to be overcooked. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll have some stew when we get back. Okay. I mean, I went out to find the ingredients, and well, I'll I don't help you recollect the ingredients. You will. Um, hard, maybe. <laughs> Say some of them aren't in the easiest of spots to get. If it's on the top shelf, I'm sure we could reach it for you. That that is the main problem <laughs> <laughs> that I face here is just all the ingredients are at the store. They're just on the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. So let's grab let's grab some some whack food, and then we'll, we'll go to the pipes. Okay. Okay. And that is where we're going to end our episode. <laughs> Picking up next time with some lunch at the WAC, followed by investigation of the pipes. Now that we don't have blueprints to the campus, wink. Wink. You best hope I don't run into Dean Duvall, because I have some words with her. (laughs) Wink. Wink. (laughs) Well, if you listeners would like to have words with us, the good kind, uh, you can reach out to us on social media at Death Saving Bros on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram. Uh, You can also check out more of the podcast on our Patreon at patreon.com slash deathsavingbros, where there are conversational recaps, extra episodes, and bloopers, as well as much, much more. If you want to reach out to us individually, I am on social media at hbcamper. You can find me at benfro15. I'm at I'm a underscore B underscore rad. You can follow the Reddit or visit my grave site when this cough and ear infection and headache kill me. You can find me on the PlayStation Network as F-A-T-T dash Smith. And to all those of you who are listening in your cars, in your homes, or wherever you may be, keep saving those death rows, and we'll see you on the next one. This episode was made possible by our patrons. The following individuals have pledged at the $5 tier. Tad Corsi. Thank you for your support. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs Magic Escape Room and Thinking Music are by Kevin McLeod and Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0 and sourced from filmmusic.io. The track Midnight Magic is music by Orchestralis. The song, The Specialist, is copyright Will Savino and the Music D20 Project. These tracks are used with permission, all rights reserved.